So, have you ever wanted to have your damage scale depending on the distance between your enemies and your player? Or to set up an enemy detection system that isn't just an on-off threshold? Or perhaps make some stat bar recover with a non-constant speed? And all the while, you wanted to avoid peppering your code with a bunch of unreadable formulas? Then you need to learn about a great good built-in, the curves. Now, just before we dive in, have you ever wanted to get some professional feedback for your Godot projects? If you join my Patreon as a Square member, you'll get to ask me for personalized reviews once every two months. That's a full analysis of your project, with a detailed report and suggestions for improvement, all this for only 40 bucks. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free article that explains it all, over here. Basically, a curve resource is a Godot asset that, you guessed it, allows you to define a math curve to map an input value to an output value with a custom formula. But the cool thing is that you can draw this curve manually in the editor in a super intuitive way which allows you to create complex math transformations very quickly and very easily. Let's say we go back to our damage scaling per distance example. The easiest solution is to just have the distance turned into a linear factor, meaning our scaling is given by a linear function like this one. That's simple to do, but it's also a bit boring, and seriously lacking in terms of game design and balancing. So perhaps we could reuse the two functions I talked about in this other tutorial, smooth step and ease, to make our scaling function a bit more interesting. Okay, so now it's not linear anymore, and these easings add more expression and finesse to a gameplay, but these functions also come with some constraints. When using smooth step, you can't precisely define what your mapping looks like. The easings are determined for you. And when using ease, you've got more control with this parameter, but it's not that easy to read unless you keep the official ease cheat sheet next to you. But now compare this to just drawing your scaling function as a curve by hand directly in this easy-to-use graph editor. And once you're done, all you have to do to use it is get your curve resource in your code and sample it at a given input value to get the result. Pretty cool, right? Plus, since you're defining your curve with as many points as you want, you can even create more complex and unusual shapes for really custom behaviors. Finally, as a quick note, it's actually possible to use this kind of curves in your shaders or advanced visual renders too, not just to simplify your math logic. Thanks to the curve texture and curve XYZ texture, you can define one or a group of three curves and pass them to a shader, for example. That's also typically used for stuff like particle systems, so that you can have one or more properties change over time for your particles. But in any case, there you go. You now know how to use curves to define complex behaviors with minimal code and really tweak all your little game balance options to your liking directly in the editor. I really hope you liked this tutorial. Don't hesitate to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. Also, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for their support and to you for watching. And as always, take care.